ladies and gentlemen it's a great opportunity to interact with you on a topic of great relevance we are all passing through the holy days of lent leading up to easter the underlying message of easter is hope and that is where pope francis assumes great importance and relevance primarily because of the impact of uh, globalization which has been further compounded by covid-19 the world has plunged into uncertainty and despair market driven economy and the consequent effects have turned everything into a virtual mirage and reality has very little role to play here and the most disconcerting fact is that there is a woeful dearth of global voices against the twin menace of globalization and massive exploitation let's spend a few minutes to go back to the background of pope francis he became the pope this very same day 13th of march in the year 2013 and he has completed 8 years of his papacy all through these 8 years he has proved beyond doubt that his twin contributions are credibility and hope he is the 266th pope and more relevantly the first non european pope in 1200 years he is a true disciple of saint francis of assisi he embraces the poor the marginalized attacks greed nuclear weapons and champions the environment the centrality of uh, re- redeeming human beings that is the core element of uh, his papacy everywhere the inalienable rights of the human beings the value of uh, being a human being is central to his uh, principles overall here is a pope who lives the gospel to quote him life is often a desert it is difficult to walk but if we trust in god it can become beautiful as a highway never lose hope continue to believe always in spite of everything hope opens new windows making us capable of dreaming what is not even imaginable i would like to personally qualify him as an engine of hope and an exception to the so called ritual pharaohs his pedagogy is one of mercy and empathy and that makes him very different and dear to the entire world he counts globalization as a pandemic in fact a more dangerous pandemic than covid-19 because he believes that globalization is no more a multi jet nozzle spray for economic recovery and financial catastrophe terrorism climate chaos and poverty instead of addressing these fundamental issues globalization has further aggravated the extent and reach of uh, these challenges 
in fact he believes that globalization should be an antibody to prevent injustice to humanity and it should work towards charity and solidarity. All through one can say that hope is the manifesto of all his uh, actions. His indomitable faith in hope takes us back to the words of uh, Charles Dickens in his classic novel A Tale of Two Cities. Dickens emphasizes two key concepts resurrection and uh, transformation. To quote Charles Dickens, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of hope, it was the epoch of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the season of, uh, it was the winter of despair. We had everything before us, we had nothing before us. Again, when we go to the words of Gaithe, who says that hope is a second soul, Pope Francis comes very close to that. His original name was George Mario Bergoglio. At the age of 21, he came under the attack of a deadly pneumonia, which resulted in surgical removal of a part of his right lung, but that only strengthened his resolve. Perhaps that resolve could be the underlying reason why he considers COVID-19 as an opportunity to liberate the world economic model from the clutches of globalization. In his recent work, which came in 2020 titled Let Us Dream, he suggests an antidote to the endless woes facing the world. Coming to his encyclicals, the first one came in the year 2013, his inaugural year. It is titled Lumen Fidei, which means the light of faith. It was prepared part by his predecessor also. This encyclical can be summed up as the Magna Carta of the sweeping changes in his vision. He prescribes the remedies for ending exclusion by reforming the global financial systems, ushering in a more pastoral church. The encyclical also addresses people's needs in real life. His second encyclical titled Laudate Si, which means praise be to you, came in the year 2015. This document is addressed to the poorest of the poor, which is the Mother Earth. He calls for an ecological retooling of the economy and prescribes remedies to reduce wasteful consumption. He says the earth can't be squeezed like an orange and he decries the throwaway culture that has plunged the earth into warming, global warming. Globalization and wasteful consumption has also massively affected wildlife, our communities and our children. In a recent weekly audience, he criticizes the wrong notion or rather the wrong interpretation of the centrality of human beings 
In fact, this notion has resulted in massive exploitation and destruction of our natural resources. Coming to his uh, third encyclical, which is titled Fratelli Tutti, Brothers All, which means Brothers All. Pope Francis talks about a bomb for the whole world in crisis. It is a scathing criticism of the laissez faire capitalism. The document is also a meditation on the coronavirus pandemic. Here again, he exhorts the world to transform the pandemic into an opportunity. As we know, COVID-19 has further aggravated the destruction caused by globalization and the throwaway culture. A sizable part of this document goes to the discussion of the massive economic polarization in our world, where 80 percent of our resources, which belongs to the whole world of 7 billion people, 80 percent of our resources are in the hands of just 20 percent people, which is a glaring example of the extent to which uh, the world is uh, being exploited. He calls for a globalization of solidarity and of the spirit. He has a clear vision to bring about productive diversity and business creativity. He believes in the creation of jobs and not the elimination. Coming to his vision on education, the key term to be used is uh, transformation. He wants education as an instrument of empowering our youngsters to think and to reason. There is a close similarity between what Pope Francis believes and what Nelson Mandela once said, I quote, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world, unquote. He believes in inclusive education which has within itself a seed of hope. In this respect, he calls teachers as artisans of future generations. He argues for the rights of homosexuals in a recent documentary titled Francisco, which is a work of Evgeny Efninsky, an Israeli-American film director. He says, homosexual people have a right to be in a family and nobody should be thrown out or made miserable over it. Overall, one can see that this Pope ventures into the periphery in search of the one lost sheep, the prodigal. He is a, a passionate champion of interfaith dialogue, which reminds us of the words of Bede Griffiths, a Benedictine monk, who says that we may have fingers of different sizes, and these fingers can be compared to different faiths, but essentially all these fingers originate from the same palm. This is the spirit with which he approaches his own religion and other faiths. And I would say 
this is the greatest contribution of uh, Pope Francis, uh, his ability to take into confidence uh, other faiths uh, also. He synthesizes uh, the richness of uh, plurality in his words and uh, actions. His contribution for bringing about peace uh, in South Sudan and uh, Colombia and for the resumption of uh, diplomatic ties between Cuba and the United States has been immense. In 2019, he visited the United Arab Emirates and became the first one to conduct a holy mass on the Arabian Peninsula, the first pope to do so. Pope Francis takes us to the words of Mahatma Gandhi about the Bible. Gandhiji says, the Bible can turn the world upside down and bring peace to a battleground planet. Here is a Pope who lives the Gandhian vision of uh, the Bible. He is a great personality who believes in inclusiveness and encouragement rather than exclusion and condemnation. Another area of remarkable importance in his portfolio of contributions is his voice for the cause of women, whom he believes should be brought to decision-making roles. And in fact, he has taken some solid steps to bring ladies into the fold of so many such roles within the fold of his own religion. His sense of humanism embraces the cause of the disfigured, people who are reeling under different diseases, people with special needs and young children. He spends his time with patients in hospitals. Even his birthday once he spent with uh, such patients. He moves very well with the homeless and the deprived without uh, taking care of any protocols. He has shown the gesture to meet the inmates of a detention center and uh, he decided to watch the feet of uh, criminals. He is a true preserver of the Bible. Another area of his contribution is uh, his strident criticism of arms trade because he calls arms trade is money trenched in blood. His recent observation is striking indeed. He says, as long as the church places its hope on wealth, Jesus is not there. He is not just a man of a glorious preaching, but his preaching is with a credible reach also. He lives in a simple two-bedroom apartment instead of the affluence of the apostolic palace. His concern encompasses the Rohingya Muslim minority in China, the Yazidi community, and all persecuted people. His recent book, Let Us Dream, is devoted to all of them. The path of the world should be paved with uh, the cause of the poor Uyghurs also, he says in a recent uh, document. Recently, very recently he visited Iraq and has done immensely towards promotion of interfaith uh, dialogue. And uh, he has declared solidarity with uh, minorities visiting several key personalities 
in Iraq. It is all the more relevant that his Iraq visit was the first one ever since COVID-19 broke out. In the context of COVID-19 vaccine, he has made some notable contributions. He argues for equal access to the vaccine and talks against vaccine nationalism, stockpiling of vaccine by rich countries, which has caused rather a kind of vaccine apartheid. He is a big critic of pharma profiteering also. Overall, one can see that his leadership has the smell of the sheep. Pope Francis, to sum up, is a stream of spirituality. He teaches us that spirituality is not an escape from the world, but a more meaningful engagement with it. He is an epoch-making artist of connections, global connections. I would conclude by saying that he is a lamp of faith and oil of uh, charity. So, it is my humble submission that he should be called a Pope of all, hope for all. Thank you.